Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is week number eight of my 2023 pantry challenge. If you're new here, I'll leave a link to the entire 2023 pantry challenge right here if you want to watch the whole thing from the beginning. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to see more videos from me or check out the join button for other ways to support my channel. Let's see what I came up with this week. Good morning. This morning, I am going to try a breakfast recipe suggestion from Catherine Barlow. I am going to use up some of this Durham wheat semolina flour, and I'm going to try semolina pudding. Uh, it's also called semolina porridge, I guess. I've never had it before. Uh, I, I have made a pudding with cornmeal or grits or something. This looks really a lot finer than that. Maybe it'll be kind of like cream of wheat, which I haven't had for a really long time. The recipe asks for vanilla sugar. I'm not sure what that is, but I do have vanilla and I do have sugar. And we'll add some cinnamon. I've got some blueberries uh, from the freezer and raspberries from the freezer. We'll do up the milk for the recipe using my skim milk powder. It wants 600 milliliters, which is uh, four, two cups, two and a half cups of milk. Recipe says it's super, super fast, so I'm pretty excited about it. For the two and a half cups of milk, I'm gonna use a half a cup of skim milk powder plus two tablespoons. 10 tablespoons of skim milk powder. And then I fill it to 600 milliliters. It's about two and a half, a little shy of two and a half cups. I'm gonna heat the milk up with the vanilla sugar and the cinnamon. I looked up vanilla sugar and it's it's a thing all on its own, but as a replacement, I'm going to use one tablespoon of regular sugar and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. I heat that milk up to a boil. recipe is a bit strange. It calls for 10 to 12 teaspoons of semolina. Oh, here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I want a nice thick pudding. 12 teaspoons is not very much of this giant bag, but if I like it, it's a great way to use it up. This is a half cup, so it's maybe a third of a cup. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> this is a third of a cup measure, so it's a little less than a third of a cup. Okay, bring it to a boil. And then we're going to add the flour, the durum wheat semolina flour, slowly while whisking continuously. Then we whisk for two minutes till it gets thicker, I guess. It turned an interesting sort of darker color. Whisk, whisk, whisk. It is starting to thicken up a bit. Just gonna give it a little more time. Probably because that milk is pretty thin. I don't actually know how thick it's supposed to be. Apparently it thickens when it, as it cools too. I guess you want it to be like pudding consistency, right? That's three minutes. It's looking a little better. I think you can just boil it until it's the consistency you want it to be. Okay, this looks like it thickened up quite a bit. I mean, it reminds me of some kind of definite flour mixture, but it smells one like, in terms of the way it looks, it looks kind of like flour. I don't know how much of this I could reasonably eat. It should be pretty filling, right? It's pretty thick. Let's just try it the way it is. What does it taste like? Um, hmm. It's like cream of wheat. 
I would have added a little bit of salt to it because I feel like the cinnamon and stuff could use a little bit more oomph. If the cinnamon went well with the vanilla, but that's just the flavoring. I'm gonna put the berries on top because that looks perfect. Because everything is better with maple syrup. Now let's try it. Okay, berries and maple syrup. It's pretty thick. It is like the consistency of, of a type of pudding. Mm. The berries are very nice in it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yeah, I could eat that. I will eat it. It is like a porridgey type pudding thing. It was really fast to make. I took three minutes with the Durham, like semolina flour in it. I can see doing this. I would double this recipe maybe. I think it'll be pretty filling. The porridge or the pudding itself doesn't really have much of a flavor because all I can really taste is the cinnamon. Just to get those, that vanilla flavor and the cinnamon flavor to come out more because I can't really taste it. Either that or you want to use more vanilla maybe. More vanilla, more sugar. Next time I would probably use two, maybe two tablespoons of sugar and the same amount of cinnamon. It's really good though, it's, it's new. Definitely I have three bags of that semolina flour, so some of it is gonna end up as semolina pudding or semolina porridge. This is, this is an awesome way to use up. It doesn't use up very much, but if I make it a lot, we can have a lot of pudding. And that's awesome. Thumbs up. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Catherine Barlow. I wouldn't have thought to try this. I think it's pretty good. You can adjust the flavors to your preference. It's really a very mild tasting pudding type cream of wheat uh, thing. And, and I think it can be really great. So thanks again. Yay pudding for breakfast. I like to just find with a lot more fruit and a lot more maple syrup. It was pretty yummy. Mm -hmm. Good morning. I'm relying a lot on your guys' suggestions this, these couple of weeks. I'm not feeling overly uh, creative and I'm a bit under the weather. So it's awesome. I can look there and everybody has such great ideas. A suggestion from Cat V to put cornflake crumbs on my yogurt. I have this yogurt that I made. Some strawberries from the freezer. These strawberries I grew from the freezer. And then I got some bananas in the grocery haul, which is awesome. And I think I'll add some apple jelly just to sweeten things up a bit. I'm just going to do up some bowls of yogurt with fruit with cornflake crumbs this morning. See how that tastes. Mm. Oh, so happy about having bananas. Just going to microwave these strawberries with a little bit of sugar. Apple jelly. Mm. One of my favorites. combination. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of these cornflake crumbs to put on here, but we're going to take a fair amount because I'm trying to use it up, but I've still got this much left. We usually put like granola or other, other cereals in our yogurt, but I think this will be nice too. <laughs> More cornflake crumbs. Okay, that's enough. There's still some left. <laughs> and some apple jelly on top. Oh, it's a nice jelly. Just for some sweetness. Okay, that looks good. 
looks like a good breakfast. Jelly and jam and fruit and yogurt and cornflakes all mashed up. Yeah, anything with apple jelly is going to be good, right? Get some of those cornflake crumbs and the yogurt. Banana. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's just fine. I can tell it's cornflake crumbs. Tastes like the cereal. Can't really tell that it's squished up. Yeah, it goes just fine in there. Thanks for the suggestion, Cat V. Might ease up this cornflake crumbs more and more with the yogurt, fruit. Just throw it on there. It's definitely a nice little crunchy topping. Yummy. For breakfast, cornflake crumbs on yogurt. You just have to tell me whether or not you like the cornflake crumbs. Oh, I like it. You put a lot of granola and stuff in your yogurts and fruits. I do. Definitely it's crunchy. It's crunchy, right? I thought it would just get mushy, but it stays pretty crunchy. I like it. But would you put it also in your yogurt with your other granola? Yeah, I would. It would when you, if you added it with granola, Don't it, be it would just better. add a nice crunchy yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay, cool. For lunch today, we had that roast chicken dinner last week. And for lunch today, I'm going to make up chicken bowls. I've got the mashed potatoes. I've got some gravy. I've got some cream corn that I'm going to add to it. And then we're using up this stuffing mix from the pantry. We'll dice up some chicken, mashed potato, chicken, or maybe mashed potato, cream corn, chicken, gravy. Oh, chicken stuffing gravy. We'll figure it out. It'll be yummy. I think it goes mashed potatoes, cream corn, stuffing. No, mashed potatoes, chicken. <laughs> I don't even know. We're going to put mashed potatoes at the bottom. Okay, I think we have it figured out. Should go mashed potatoes, cream corn, chicken, Stuffing gravy. That's what we're gonna try. I really love cream corn a lot. Chicken. It is like a popcorn chicken bowl, except we're adding stuffing and the chicken isn't fried chicken poppers or whatever they're called and the corn is niblet corn but boy I love those popcorn chicken bowls from KFC they don't always have them on the menu but when I ask they still make them for me maybe KFC should put stuffing in their popcorn chicken bowls that would be really good I think I would enjoy that that's the last of that box of stuffing mix and then we're going to cover it all with some awesome gravy. Mmm, lovely. Oh, this looks pretty yummy. Corn and chicken and Stuffing and gravy, mashed potatoes. How could this be bad? Leftover chicken bowl. I'll eat this up really super fast. Mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. It's really hot. Yeah, you could add some more red pepper flakes if you want to. lot. Ooh, those fresh red pepper flakes look nice. For lunch today, I'm going to try to use up some of this Singapore chili sauce. I only ever really use it on chicken and I love it on like chicken breast roasted, um, uh, baked in the oven. 
but I want to try to find something else to do and it may not be very creative, but I'm going to try putting it on like noodles, masala noodles. I'm not sure that it'll go with this thing of porcelain sauce. These are the ingredients in it. Vinegar, sugar, red hot chili peppers, uh, raisins, garlic, ginger root, and salt. So that's the ingredients in the chili sauce. It might go okay on these noodles just for a quick lunch. I want to try it. There's got to be other things I can do with this Singapore chili sauce besides put it on chicken. Don't worry, that recipe was in the Bernardine Complete Book of Home Preserving. I think it's the Ball Book, a Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving in the United States. That's where that recipe is. It's a good day for an easy lunch because this this is the state sort of of my house right now to be with all the painting going on. So it's kind of crazy in here. It's a lot of things in this package of noodles. And I'm going to make all four of these noodle cakes for a couple of lunches and for Mr. Waters to take to work if he wants to. We're gonna cook it in like 900 milliliters of water. I think I'm also gonna add all of the dragon's tongue beans are my favorite beans from the garden. We didn't get too many beans this last year, but I'm gonna throw, this is probably maybe two cups of green beans into this mix. Lots of noodles. and four seasoning packets. Mix all that in. Yummy. Cook that up. Just to cook that for two minutes. I think I'll start counting two minutes when I Get it back up to a boil because of those frozen vegetables. There we go. That's two minutes. It actually boiled off that water pretty, pretty quickly. So let's put this in a bowl. I've also got some dried parsley that I can put on and a little bit of kale powder. So we don't forget. Let's open this up. That's what it looks like. Chili sauce. Oh, it smells really good. Like vinegary, peppery, but sweet. All right, lots of noodles. And green beans. Just a tiny bit of this dehydrated parsley. Just because I'm trying to use that too. Parsley. And of course, a tiny bit of kale why not and then this lovely chili sauce Singapore chili sauce will be wonderful I think I think that Mr. Waters likes this Singapore chili sauce so he'll use quite a bit of it if he likes these noodles I think he does I can't quite remember Oh, it smells really good. I mean, I slightly overcooked the noodles. I love that chili sauce so much that <laughs> just whatever I put it on tastes amazing because of the sauce is so amazing. So this works just fine. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'll be putting more of that on there like that. And that will be so very good. Yeah, see how I mean, quick, fast, instant noodle meal for lunch. Mm. I like this so much. I think that even if I had just a packet of just noodles and I mixed it with that chili sauce, it would make fabulous noodles, just the chili sauce by itself, the Singapore chili sauce. So I'm pretty happy with this whole thing. Yummy. So we're making a lot of meals out of those two roast chickens that I did up. We did actually end up taking the second one back out of the freezer to eat because I'm just not feeling super hot. But I'm going to make some chicken sauce sandwiches. I've got the rest of this uh, Singapore chili sauce 
that I put on those noodles and I'm gonna mix it up like a chicken salad sandwich with mayonnaise, that sauce. I've got these buns from the grocery haul and the chicken and some lettuce for sandwiches for lunch today. This is supposed to be the top, but it's the bottom. <laughs> It'll be fine. You can eat it any way you want. Singapore chili sauce, chicken salad sandwiches. Looks pretty good. With those peppers in there. Mmm. A nice quick meal on that sourdough bread. The weather just does not know what to do here. I'll tell you what, we've got all kinds of snow and really cold, cold, cold again. All of a sudden, it gets really yucky, snowy out. Mr. Wanders that was at work on top of the mountain and he said it was 30 degrees below Celsius. I'll tell you what, minus, uh, is it minus 30 or minus 40 is the same in Celsius as it is in Fahrenheit. I can't remember where they converge. Ugh. So I feel like making a nice, cozy, comfy, dinner tonight. So many people suggested I put my stuffing mix in a meatloaf, but when I looked all the way back in week one, it was Allison Phillips who gave the first suggestion to use my stuffing mix in a meatloaf. I'm gonna use this cornbread stuffing mix. I, I think it'll be okay. I bought this one time. I don't remember what I was gonna use it for. I just wanted to give it a try. Cornbread, cornbread stuffing mix. So I'm gonna use that one pound of pretty of lean ground beef, two eggs. I'm gonna use ketchup and I'm also gonna add some Worcestershire because I like the taste of that. I'm not gonna put any seasonings in it because this cornbread mix has a lot of seasonings in it. So we're just gonna use that. I'm just gonna mix it all up, put it in this loaf pan and then put it in the oven for dinner. Preheat the oven at 375. I will post a link in the description below to the recipe that I am going to loosely try to follow. It's said to add a half cup of water. I'm not sure. I'll only add it if it looks like it needs it. Maybe it does need it because of all of these breadcrumbs and everything. Well, we'll see. I'm not going to line the pan with any kind of aluminum foil or parchment paper. I find that uh, meatloaves kind of have a lot of grease, so they come out just fine. I guess it'd be easier. I don't know, it seems like it would be just messier if you had the stuff that you have to take out of there. I don't know, I never do it. But you can give it a try if you want to. I don't ever line it a uh, meatloaf uh, pan with aluminum foil. Plus that's a waste of aluminum foil, I think. Anyway, we're just gonna put it straight in there. One package of cornbread stuffing mix. a lot more breadcrumbs than I would normally add so maybe it, that's why it needs the extra water makes sense I'm actually gonna do half ketchup and half I've got chicken and red barbecue sauce I'm sure it doesn't really matter what kind of barbecue sauce you use I'm gonna use half barbecue sauce just for some extra flavory goodness so I need a quarter cup of ketchup and a quarter cup of barbecue sauce one tablespoon of Worcestershire and two eggs. Oh, I've got some water ready if it looks like it needs that and I'm just gonna start mushing it up all together. Oh, that meat's so cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Oh. Lots of spices in there, for sure. And about half the water. Oh, this is warm water. Yay. 
Maybe just let that stuffing mix sit for a minute because it still seems really crunchy. It'll take a minute for all those that bread to soak up the water. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let it sort of sit and absorb everything. Then I'll see if it needs some more water. All right, we took a brief intermission to see if that would soak up stuff. And I did my fingernails because they were driving me crazy. So sorry. If you want to hear feeling under the weather, everything gets put on the back burner. I don't think this needs any more water. Mix it a little bit. Oh yeah, it feels much better. So if you just, you could either just let the stuffing mix sit before you mix it with some water. But I like to add not too much water. So I was happy to mix it first and then decide was, I definitely added a quarter cup of water rather than a half a cup of water, and it feels pretty good. We'll see if I have a dry meatloaf. I don't think I will. Just put it in the pan. I'm going to spread some of this barbecue sauce on top instead of the ketchup. Mmm, meatloaf. Such a nice comfort food. I got some buns in the grocery haul. I think I'm just gonna put meatloaf on buns or eat it with a bun, one of the two. Meatloaf is just so much easier than say making a whole bunch of hamburgers or anything. You just squish it all up in a pan and bake it. Not really the right kind of. Um, not really the right kind of barbecue sauce, but I think it'll be yummy. I know it looks pretty all spread out like that, but I like it <laughs> cover the whole top. So, here we go. And we're gonna put it in the oven for 45 to 50 minutes or until the internal temperature is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. You can just slice it open and see if the meat on the inside is cooked and not pink anymore if you don't have a meat thermometer as well. Into the oven. I'll try 45 minutes first, 45 to 50 it says. I can smell that barbecue sauce, it smells so good. Just check it. See what it says. Yeah, that's hot enough. 181. 166. That's good enough. Yummy hamburger. That barbecue sauce on top smells really good and it made a nice little glaze on the top there, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. I've got some buns that I think I'm gonna put it on or at least, at least eat it with. So I did buy these sourdough buns in the grocery haul. Maybe I'll put one right on there. I couldn't say that it's really easy to get out. I think it's gonna fall apart. Plus the first one is always the hardest to get out. Oh, actually, oh, it broke a little bit. You can totally see the stuffing in there for sure. That's kind of cool. You can tell it's stuffing instead of breadcrumbs. Well, I'm just gonna have one slice right now, actually. Oh, it's very, very moist. I'm glad I didn't add the more water to it. Can we just eat it on this bun, actually? Like a sloppy joe. <laughs> very, very fall apart. Kind of like stuffing all over the place. I don't think that more water would have held it together much better. This is very tasty. I might just put the other half of the bun on top and eat it like a hamburger. That was super fast, honestly. To mix it all together was fast and then 45 minutes in the oven. Oh, and it definitely doesn't need any more spices. It just very much tastes like stuffing mix. You could toast your buns, make them look more appealing than this. That's what I'm gonna do. Mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could eat this meatloaf any way that you normally eat meatloaf. 
of course. I just want something really easy right now. And I'm excited about that. Lots of bread. Because of the stuffing. <laughs> More bread. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Allison Phillips. I know I'm not eating it like a traditional meatloaf, but this turned out awesome. And uh, Mr. Wandles will definitely make a dinner out of that, and I will eat it whatever way I uh, feel like. <laughs> but I think I'll make some coleslaw, some carrots, maybe some mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes will be wonderful with that. I actually think I have some leftover rice in the fridge, so that will be really good with it too. Yay, meatloaf, stuffing mix. That's all the stuffing mix too. This is my last box of stuffing mix that I had in the pantry that I wanted to use up. So yay, no more stuffing mix for a while. I still have a bunch in the basement, but we'll save it. Just remembered that I got one of these salad kits, Caesar Supreme salad kits in the grocery haul. So I'm gonna have this meatloaf burger with some greenery. Yay, I've ever been craving some green stuff. I know these salad kits aren't the cheapest way to go about it, but when you're not feeling very well, sometimes you just have to make compromises to make it work, you know? Just cut things with scissors. Parmesan. This seems like so much salad dressing for this salad, so I never end up using all of what they give me, but. We'll see how it goes. Parmesan that comes with that package doesn't really taste like Parmesan. So I got some of this Cracker Barrel at the grocery haul. So I'm just going to add a little more. Oh, that stuff immediately smells like nasty Parmesan. <laughs> the smell of Parmesan isn't really great. Might add a little bit more of the dressing as well. Sometimes when you put dressing on these salad mixes, it turns out really soupy like how much dressing do they expect me to eat there we go i mustered a little bit more i ended up with a meatloaf hamburger with a caesar salad and that's a little bit more that's not creative a little bit more effort i could probably put kale powder in that caesar salad <laughs> i mean i might just a half a teaspoon of kale powder, you won't even notice it. It's just extra. You know how much kale is required to dehydrate this amount of kale? I think that's all I want. <laughs> More green. Hello. For dinner tonight, I'm going to continue on with my easy to cook theme for this pantry challenge weeks. I found an excellent recipe. We've been eating those two roast chickens that I cooked up in a variety of different ways, but I have the two carcasses left over and I'm going to make up a lentil chicken soup. Yeah, I'll post a link to the recipe in the description below. Uh, it looks really good. It asks for one pound of red split lentils and I have pretty much one pound of red split lentils. So this should use up this whole bag. I've already got the carcasses in and going. So I'm gonna boil these until, I've got a little bit of onion and some carrots in there just to add some flavor to the broth. I'm gonna make a broth out of this, pick the bones uh, to get all the meat off of them, and then we'll start the soup with that. After that, I will be frying up some carrots and an onion. It asks for cumin and three bay leaves and salt and pepper to taste. So I'm excited to give this recipe a try. Lentil chicken soup. It makes quite a bit, so I'm hoping it makes dinners, a couple of dinners, easy, low amount of work, because I'm just gonna let it boil for some hours now and uh, before I start making up the soup. The recipe does say to just start with some bone-in chicken, but because I've got these carcasses, that's what I'm going to use. But you could use bone-in chicken and kind of boil it up and then take the meat off of it for sure. Okay, I did make this broth with the chicken carcasses that I had from the two chickens. We picked off all the chicken and we had a little bit left over um, just chicken that we had pulled off of it before. I'm gonna put the rest of this gravy that I had. I had two of these containers and this is what I have left of the gravy. We've got the lentil. I don't have any fresh dill, so I'm gonna use dill weed. 
in the bay leaves. Oil, lentil, salt and pepper, onion, carrots. Let's make soup. I saute the onion and carrots. For about five minutes. I'm gonna add the lentils after we rinse them really well. It's the entire bag of lentils. Yay, I'm so excited that I used one bag of my many bag of red split lentils. More lentils. Make sure you really rinse your lentils. I think swirling them in a bowl works better than straining them to get all the muck out and dust, dust and stuff. One teaspoon of cumin, three bay leaves, one tablespoon of salt. I'm going to add this gravy here to not in the recipe, just dumping it in there. All of the chicken that we got off of the carcasses and we had left over from the chicken generally in there as well. I, mean, I don't know how much chicken you would get off of one pound of bone-in chicken, but this is what we've got. Seems like a lot, seems like a lot of chicken. About one teaspoon of ground black pepper. Lots of pepper. Now as for 10 cups of water, I've got about five cups of chicken broth that I made. And I'll just top it up with water after that. Probably lots actually, that's eight cups of water. So I think I'll just leave it at that. Might have to add more water as we go as it sort of evaporates. And then we're gonna bring all that juicy, wonderful goodness, everything to a boil. Very excited about this recipe. If I like it, it uses up a lot, like half a bag of lentils. That's great. If I like it, it's fabulous. It's gonna look a little like creamy from the gravy that I dumped in there. Can I add some more? water if it looks like it's running out. Bring it to a boil and then we're going to cook it for at least 40 minutes it says. I mean, I'm not, not trying to cook any bone-in chicken so I think I'm just cooking it until the lentils are done. So we'll say 40 minutes to give all the flavors a chance, all the bay leaves and everything to mix together and be yummy. Can't wait for this. Here we go, it's boiling. I did try to skim some of the foam off but I think I'll just wait until it's more finished to do more. It was kind of like foamy on top. I wasn't enjoying it. Maybe it's for making too many jellies in my life. <laughs> I don't like the foam. Foam, bad. I'm gonna set it for 40 minutes. It smells really good with the cumin and the bay leaves. I wasn't too sure, but it smells really yummy. Like I wanna eat it right now. Oh, it's really looking good. It's really thickening up. Oh, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> but it, I thought it was kind of strange, the cumin and the, the bay leaves, but it uh, smells wonderful. It's like a pea soup, like a pea soup taco, cumin pea soup. <laughs> Weird. It smells so yummy. I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Those lentils, they get like kind of like split peas like a pastiness to them they're probably done but i'm gonna cook it for the entire 40 minutes just to give those bay leaves and all the spices a chance to mix in all right i did only end up using eight cups of the water and broth combined i didn't really need more water but i like a thicker thicker soup so oh this is so nice looking We did have some buns, ciabatta bread buns. All right, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of dill on that. I don't have any fresh dill, but I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this dried dill on top just to see how it is. It smells pretty dilly. It's a 
is my own dry, dry dill. Just keep using the same container. <laughs> A little bit of dill on top. If I like it, I'll add some more. We'll see how it goes. I'll try that. Try the dill with the cumin and the bay leaves. Sure. It's a lot. That is really good. I thought it might be too much salt, but it's not. The lentils mushed up really nicely. There's chicken in there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's in very nice. Very similar to a split pea soup. The other lentil soup that I made. I'm really enjoying this lentil stuff. It's great. The, I mean, the dill, you can barely taste it. Maybe, might try some more dill in there. Fresh dill would be really nice. Now, whatever all those combination of flavors together made this taste awesome so i'll be eating a lot of this the more chicken you can get in there probably the better you want to try it i do want to try <laughs> okay you're going all in with the dill i couldn't really taste it so that's pretty good yeah you put more dill in. I don't, I don't know. even know what that tastes like. I mean, so it's, the texture is very like split pea soup, right? It tastes like like a split pea soup right away, but then I want to say it's peppery, but it's not. Oh, it's like, like cumin y. Yeah. Something. Really well, nice. there's pepper in it. But yeah, but. Not a ton. Just a warm, warm. Man, that's really good. It's like, it's like a warm, it's a warmy, yeah. good, warm goodness. Thumbs up for me for a chicken lentil soup recipe and it used up a ton of lentils, but that's the entire bag of lentils gone, one entire bag. And if I make this soup again, that uses a ton of lentils. Great way to use it up. And it's good on this bread. Yummy. I'm loving this for a few dinners. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, that is the end of week number eight was a couple of weeks because I had painting and some stuff going on, but a little bit delayed. I used up the cornflake crumbs and that Singapore chili sauce. All the stuffing boxes are gone. I tried the semolina flour pudding. All the lentils are gone. Just these split peas are left. I think it was a pretty, pretty good couple of weeks of using up stuff. I'm consistently using kale um, in everything that I make. If you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to subscribe to see more videos from me. I'll post links to the entire uh, 2023 pantry challenge as well as anything else that I think that you might be interested in. Thank you guys all so much for being here and all of your super great suggestions helped me out when I was feeling like I didn't have the motivation these past couple of weeks. So it's great to have all those ideas. See you next week.